Please check out my other videos designing Monster Hunter Rise monsters as well. Do it before or after this video, your call. Monster Hunter localization names. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. It could be the case of some just flat out sounding cooler in one version or another. Sometimes it's just pointless shortening. Sometimes it's because the localization just make the names confusing. Sometimes it's because the English names way overdo giving the all suffix to monsters that originally don't have them. But what bugs me the most is when the localization loses a cultural or mythological reference in the name. Most notably, I don't like the localized name in Monster Hunter Rise because it loses the Japanese feel of the setting. Some still has a reference kinda intact, but given how yokai theme it is, I prefer they just keep it as is. I mean, World kept most of the names similar in both versions, just to minimize miscommunication across players of different languages. So I don't see why Rise didn't do the same. But it is notable that sometimes the reverse can happen. The localization can add to the cultural reference the original didn't have. Today we'll be talking about those specific cases in the two final bosses of Monster Hunter Rise. Wind Serpent Ibushi, also known as Ibushi Makihiko in Japan, and Thunder Serpent Nerva, Japanese name Naruhatada Hime. Which I can understand if the sole reason to rename them was just for the length. But unlike Amatsu Magatsuji, when shortening the names, it's actually cool to see them giving additional references. That said, I still prefer the Japanese name since like Amatsu Magatsuji, the full name just made it sound far more like old Shinto gods. Not to mention the meme name since Ibushi Makihiko, separated into Ibushi Makihiko, can sound like a normal name. Like, Imagine if this dragon is renamed David Breezy in the EN version. And Naruhatata Hime is hard to remember and say even to Japanese people, so I've heard a lot of Japanese streamers refer to her as Hakuna Matata Hime, or Princess Hakuna Matata. So there's also that. So first we'll see what the two are originally themed after then. Both dragons are obviously conceptualized from Fujin and Raijin. The Japanese gods of wind and thunder often depicted in pairs. They are said to be born of the underworld from Izanami, the mother god, who died giving birth to the fire god Hinokakutsuji. When her husband Izanagi descends to the underworld to bring Izanami back to the land of the living, he is instead terrified when he discovered his wife now looking like a zombie. In horror, he attempted to flee, anchoring Izanami who therefore sends her demon spawns among them Fujin and Raijin, after him. They are the few who also made it out of the underworld after Izanagi before he closes the gate with a giant boulder. Once freed from the underworld, they became actual gods who are worshipped by the people, but also feared for their ferocity. They are sometimes credited for the storm that chased away the Mongols from invading Japan. They are commonly referenced in Japanese medias. Perhaps most well known as being the legendary Pokemon's Tornadus and Thunderous. Fujin carries a bag on his shoulder, which he can either use to release or suck wind from, creating storms. Raijin, on the other side, carries a set of drums on his shoulders, which he beats to create the sound of thunder. Additionally, the area you find Hakuna Matata in, in Japanese version is called the Ruins of the Dragon Palace Fortress referring to the Ryugu or Dragon Palace in Japanese and Chinese mythology. The abode of Ryujin in Japanese mythology, or Aokuang in Chinese mythology. Now, these two aren't the same, they only share titles and the fact that their palaces are built on the seafloor. So one clearly inspired the other, but they're not the same guy. So basically, Makihiko and Hakuna Matata are Fujin and Raijin, made into dragons because Monster Hunter, but what about their localized names? I feel that the fact that the localization called the two monsters as serpents instead of dragons, including renaming Naruhatata Hime to Narva when there isn't a wa in Naruhatata Hime, means that they are trying to add another reference to the pair. An actual married couple of divine serpents, Fuji and Nuwa of Chinese mythology. The two are the creators of humans 
shaping them from clay and bringing them to life, appearing as humans on their upper torso and snakes in the lower torso. By connecting together, they represent yin and yang, Fuxi being the masculine yang and Nuwa being the feminine yin. Which, I mean, when you put the icons of the two monsters together, it does make a yin yang, doesn't it? They created the nobilities out of yellow clay, and mass produced the commoners by dragging strings across mud to shape all of them at once. Because it's too time consuming to do each person manually by hand. Isn't it good to see social inequality being baked right into your creation myth? In other versions, the two were survivors of the Great Flood and made children the normal way. Only that the baby doesn't come off normally, but rather as a ball of meat, which was then cut into pieces and scattered across the lands where they became full humans. Fuji taught humans cooking, fishing, how to hunt with weapons made of bone, wood, and bamboo, how to make sacrifices to the heavens, and created the institution of marriage. While Nuiva gathered five stones that symbolizes the five Chinese elements to repair the heavens damaged by the two other chaotic gods, cutting off the legs of a giant tortoise to use as pillars holding up the sky. They are sometimes named as two of the three sovereigns that ruled China in ancient times before the age of humans teaching them the use of fire, farming, and medicine, how to build houses and how to live with morals. Though who these three specific sovereigns are can vary and sometimes either one or both of Fuji or Nuva can be excluded. Because of this, we'll also be discussing the third dragon, the offspring of Makihiko and Hakuna Matata Hime, which was foreshadowed to be coming out in the next patch as the ultimate final boss of Rise. The concept is a fire dragon, basing him off Hinokakutsuchi, as he is a sibling of Fujin and Raijin. But if you just set Makihiko or Haguna and Matata on fire, combined with Rice having the Japanese theme, people would misunderstood that it's a sun dragon, right? Then it'd be Amaterasu and not Kakutsuchi. That's why we're going to have to mix in elements to make sure it doesn't look solar. And I mean, flat out normal fire dragon would also just be way too basic too. Taking from Akihiko's floating rocks, it would be a monster that used floating lava. To be specific, it would control two streams of volcanic substances at once. Floating lava on one hand and floating volcanic ash on the other. This is where I also throw in another Chinese inspiration just to sing in with the Nuva and Fuji theme in Chen Nong. The third sovereign often appearing alongside the two. He is a divine farmer who invented agriculture, farming tools, herbology, irrigation, farmer's market, and the Chinese calendar, and taught humans to use all of them. It might seem contradicting to give farmer theme to a fire dragon, but no, not really. One of the agricultural arts Chen Long invented was slash and burn, and he also is a god of burning wind. Not to mention the thing about volcanic ash or burned down forest turning the soil fertile. Of course, this dragon's overall body plan will still be the same as Makihiko and Hakuna Matata. The horns will be based on a bull, since Chen Nong is said to have bull horns, but also with the added looks of the farming tools he was said to have invented. Its hind legs are more advanced, appearing as if they are another pair of arms. The bulbs around its body, most prominently in the arms, allow it to control the lava and ash. It fights in an area similar to where you fight Hakuna Matata, only it's a lava version, a fortress built in the middle of a lava caverns to draw the imagery of Yotu, the capital city of hell in Chinese mythology. There will be elevated platforms of ballistas and cannons all around the area, dropping from the collapsed building when it attacks. But unlike in Hakuna Matata's battles, these weapons will stay around and won't just go right back into the ground when the attack is over. Instead, like in Makihiko's battles, the weapons can be destroyed and is vital when the boss calls up the barrier to protect itself. So it is advisable not to use them until Kakutuchi does its lava and ash barrier in order to not pull its aggro on the weapons. And to take after his parents, it can also use fire tornadoes and volcanic lightning to attack. 
though these just show as being just the byproducts of its actual fire attacks, than something it intentionally conjures. To show that while it hasn't mastered the control of wind and lightning like its parents, because it's more focused on its fire, it still has an overflowing innate power that unconsciously comes out. Its strongest attack is it blasting the ash into the ground, creating a pyroclastic flow that starts off as weaker wave that pushes the hunters away, while dealing rapid residual damage. During this time, the hunter must head for an elevated platform to get above the wave. But timing and positioning is important since if you miss the platform, the wave will continue to push you to the edge of the stage and you won't be able to escape. In a few seconds later, the wave of pyroclastic flow will greatly intensify, sweeping any hunters and weapons not on elevated platforms away. This initial blast would knock down a huge tower in the area, so the hunters have to rush there inside the tower before it unleashes a second attack, where it would blast a massive explosion of hot wind, lava, and lightning that engulfs the entire area. Of course, this is both taken after a fatalist fight in World. If the hunters fail to dodge both attacks in time, it is a guaranteed KO. After this attack, the battle would run into the final phase, where the floor would be ridden with lava. So there would be very little ground to travel on, and so it would also become much harder to dodge the Kakuzuchi's wide area attacks. Ballistas and cannons are no longer available in this phase, but Dragonator and Splitting Wyvern will take their place. This is the phase where Proof of Heroes blares up, and finally, you can take the monster down. Alright, so that wraps up this video on Makihiko, Hakuna Matata, and their fiery kit. If you enjoyed this and had not checked them out yet, please check out the other videos on designing Monster Hunter Rise monsters. If you want even more idea videos, I have two other playlists of series on pitching stories of my own novels and free novel premise giveaways to aspiring writers so we may help each other to create the trend of foreign writers that will help the anime industry, and so you can also check those out. Further information on that topic in particular, check out my other series on why light novels are stereotypically bad. Thank you for watching and see you next time.